novelist, poet, short story writer, biographer, essayist, and literary critic, Jesse Redmond Fawcett played a significant role during the Harlem Renaissance. Despite being in her early 40s during the height of the Renaissance, she fulfilled both the role of an accomplished creator of her own body of work, but also very importantly as a mentor to younger writers. Fawcett diverged from the typical Renaissance characteristics as she was probably a decade or more older than many of the other writers. In addition, she was known for being reserved in her demeanor, and she was not really into leading a bohemian lifestyle. Born the seventh child of Annie Seaman Fawcett and Redmond Fawcett, a minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Jesse Redmond Fawcett really identified with Philadelphia. She came from a family with a definitely middle class and very cultured background. In fact, her family was often categorized as one of the most established uh, Philadelphia families of their time. In 1900, Fawcett graduated with honors from the esteemed Philadelphia High School for Girls. Likely, she was the only black student enrolled at the time. And then afterwards, she received a scholarship to Cornell University, where she became the first black woman to attend. Fawcett graduated with Phi Beta Kappa honors from Cornell, majoring in classical languages, and later earned an MA in French from the University of Pennsylvania, another Ivy League school. In 1912, Jesse Fawcett joined The Crisis, the journal of the NAACP. It had just been begun publication 16 months before. Now, while not a radical figure, Fawcett played a vital role in raising black consciousness as literary editor for The Crisis. She tackled unpopular subjects in her fiction and challenged the publishing industry's prevailing assumptions of that time. Fawcett published the works of such writers as Langston Hughes, Count A. Cullen, Claude McKay, and Jean Toomer. In his memoir, The Big C, Langston Hughes writes, quote, Jesse Fawcett at the crisis, Charles Johnson at Opportunity, and Alain Locke in Washington were the three people who midwives the so-called new Negro literature into being. Kind and critical, but not too critical for the young. They nursed us all along until our books were born. In addition to her role as a mentor and a host of social gatherings, Jessie Fawcett's accomplishments extended far beyond. Um, She demonstrated her commitment to instilling pride in black children's heritage and fostering their creativity by co-founding and editing a monthly children's magazine called The Brownies Book. This magazine featured historical biographies of notable black figures like Denmark Vesey and Sojourner Truth, as well as articles on Africa, current events, games, riddles, and music. Furthermore, Jesse Redmond Fawcett made significant contributions to literature by publishing her own poetry, short stories, and four novels, the highest number by any writer during the Harlem Renaissance. According to the Academy of American Poets, Fawcett left the crisis in 1926 to teach French at a high school in the Bronx. She later married Herbert Harris, a businessman, in 1929, and they lived together in New Jersey until his death in 1958. At that point, Fawcett then returned to Philadelphia, where she lived until her death in April of 1961. Again, she has gone on to be celebrated as being one of the most influential writers of the Harlem Renaissance period.